Hello, and welcome. Today I'm going to teach you how to use these 3D pens to make tactile books, or books that we can feel with our hands. So, for example, this is the output of one. And as you can see, there is a raised surface on here, and as a result, I can feel this image. And for a blind and visually impaired kids, this is a great way to make picture books into tactile picture books. So let's start with first selecting books before we even get into pens. We want to try and use more simplistic line art for our books. The simpler it is, in fact, the better. Mo Willems happens to be a great example of this since our backgrounds are blank and we only have the Gerald and Piggy or the Pigeon or whatever the character is going on. So it's very straightforward, easy to do. Whereas something like a Marie Sendak book, which are beautiful books, often have quite a lot visually going on. Now you can do these books, but you just have to remember that you're having to do just the outlines of the image. You wouldn't want to do shading or something like that because it would become too much. If you're ever unsure as to whether or not you could do a book, try closing your eyes and imagining it was raised and tracing around, or with your eyes open, attempt to trace the image. And if there would be too much for your fingers to do it, then honestly, if it's too much for you, it's probably gonna to be too much for a child. Now, there are a couple different methods that we can use for doing this. I'm gonna start out by using uh, this, the hot, the 3 Dealer Create Plus, which is a hot pen, so it's meant for an older audience. I will also show you how to do it with the 3 Doodler Start. One of the methods that we can do is we can draw directly into the book. So we can simply doodle onto the page of the book uh, to create the image. So to do this, you do want to, I'm going to move this in. You want to hold the tip of this, of the hot pen almost perpendicular to the surface of the book. And you want it to touch. You know, wait a second for the material to start coming out. And then I'm going to slowly move along and trace the lines. Remember, the faster you go with these pens, the thicker, sorry, the faster you go with these pens, the thinner the line is going to be. The faster you go, the thinner the line is. So for sections where you want it to be really thick, you want to go nice and slow. For sections where you want it to be really thin, you want to go a little faster. So. And I'm just going to do outlines of everything here. I can always go back over lines, which will make them a little more raised. Oops. See that. And as I reach a corner or a point where you're stopping, so let's say I go up, I don't want to change direction. You want to wait a moment or wait a beat for a little bit of the plastic to ball up before you move back because if you do that and move too quickly you're going to drag some of the plastic with you really keeping that pen as high an angle as possible is going to give you the best result for drawing on the page it's going to wait a beat before moving back Like so. No, you can't see that, but. And so, as you can see, we have made a raised surface. So, obviously, one of the methods is to draw directly into the book. Now, I forgot to do things like the mouth, which I'll just quickly do. And I'm just going to fill in the whole area. And I'm using the tip afterwards to kind of smooth out that area because it's supposed to be a single fill, as well as I can use that tip to alter things that I've done, done something wrong. So now if I'm going to do this really thin line, as I said, I'm going to simply move a lot faster to do the thin line. And then to do the dot on the eyes, and I make sure that I wait that second. 
make sure the plastic is there. But now we can feel this. Let me clean that up a little bit. So that was one method where I'm drawing directly into the book. Now I have it. Now this works, but you are going to find that as the pages fill up, the book is going to get a little thicker than it was before. And there's the chances that if someone is bending it too much, um, it might come off. And it's pretty stuck on there. And that's the advantage of using the PLA plastic, the green plastic, green setting. Um, whereas if you were to use the ABS plastic, uh, it'll peel off much easier, more easily. Okay. Now, I'm also going to do this really quickly with the low temperature pen, where I'll doodle inside the book, and then we'll move on to another method. Um, so with this pen, the 3D Ruler Start, because it's low temperature, we can actually touch the material as it's coming out. Now, I'm just going to do Gerald, but what I do is I can move along, once again, I'm trying to keep it perpendicular, but this time I can tap the plastic down with my finger. And you want to actually do that to make sure it's nice and stuck to the surface, because we want it to stay there. So not only am I touching that surface, but I am touching that plastic right after it comes out. And it's warm to the touch, but it's not going to burn you, uh, anything like that. I can even help out if that material is in the wrong spot. I can move it, strengthen up those lines. Now, I could also just lay it at a slightly higher angle, but then you see what happens where I pull away and it'll take some of it with it, which is why it really is best to make contact with the surface and then to tap it afterwards. And we're just doing outlines, so it's almost like line drawings. Mm. That gives you a good idea. So now I, this is tactile. And the start plastic is pretty sticky as well to paper. It still can, it can come off, but it takes some effort. So that's one method. Now, the other method that we can do is we can we can use a photocopier and then copy the pages out and then we can similarly simply doodle that same way where with the start pen I'm going to doodle flat and then touch it whereas with the create plus pen I'm going to hold it at that high angle wait for the material to start extruding and then simply go along. Now that's raised. Now the ultimate method, or the biggest method that you can do is you can take apart the book, uh, and then that way you can actually assign entire pages, groups of pages, to different students, different people, and then you can hole punch it, and you can have an entire book hole punched, like so. Uh, and I think this is the best method because it's all self-contained. The pages, even though they're fatter, it's like still going to give you what you want. Um, and I even did the, the cover itself is, is also done tactfully. Uh, and you can do lettering and words. It is harder to do that, and you have to be a little more precise about doing that. It takes a little finesse, but it is doable. We'll demonstrate. So it is possible to do the lettering and the words as well. I personally think it's easier with like the Create Plus. So you want to go with the slow speed setting. Once again, I'm holding that pen perpendicular, and I'm almost floating on the letters. You're probably going to have to make them a little bit bigger than what the original text was. But the real advantage of doing this, like why would I do the text, is not only can you now feel the text, but if you want to get emotion across through text, um, 
variation in size, so this has a much larger impact when it's huge like this than if it was just small text. And someone can read the fact that a font being bigger has an emotional impact on the story. So that's a good reason to want to try new text. So that is the basic steps for producing a tactile book um, with either the 3 Doodler Star or the 3 Doodler Create Plus or in the crates. Do remember for the Create, you want to be using the PLA plastic. Um, for the Start, you need to be using the Start Eco plastic. It's cold, hot. So generally speaking for younger kids, generally speaking for older. Same rules as a hot glue gun or a soldering iron. Thanks very much. Good luck.